Hey everyone, today we're going to cover one of the most important workflows in car and vehicle modeling, which is how to add hard surface panels to our models. This is part of a series where I'll be covering car modeling from beginning to end. Today's video focuses specifically on the workflow for adding in panel details like door lines, hood lines, windows, and more. This series is targeted for beginner to advanced skill level in 3D modeling. My 2022.1 will be used for this tutorial, but the workflows can be applied to any 3D software as well as any version of Maya. So with that, let's get started. All right, so here we are in Maya and you can see here's where we're currently at. This is after I went ahead and added in all the paneling detail and everything on the vehicle. You can see how now it really starts to jump up in quality and detail once you start adding in those panels and details throughout the model. All right, this is where we last landed, which you can see we have the front detail, the rear details and everything, and we're just getting ready for this. Now, the key thing that you may have noticed is that the headlamp detail has changed a little bit, actually quite a bit, right? You can see where I last ended and then where I ended up here. What I ended up doing was, of course, always going back to our reference, right? So I put up the pole and the pole is going to be, you know, modeling this uh, Sung Kang's garage version of the Datsun 240Z here. So I will be modeling this version based on all the pole and feedback that I got. The other version was uh, this one here. So let me know down in the comments which one that you would prefer. So, of course, with all this reference here, I went ahead and was checking, you know, how the form and detail and everything on the 3D model looked in comparison to the reference. And that was clear that I needed to make some adjustments. Everything else for the most part was pretty much right where I wanted it to be, except for those headlights. So I ended up just going here, I actually just isolate this with just the reference images. And what I've been doing is kind of just using the reference images to help me with details in, in different views like the front, like the side and whatnot, but the overall proportion is still kind of based off of what I've been doing in the reference here, okay? So once I've done that, it was just simply going in here and you can see that topology and everything is the same, right? Yeah, I still have this cutout line that I had from previous and I still have this overall shape, but when, what I ended up doing was, of course, just kind of taking this version of the headlamp and just deleting it and then making the adjustments here where I ended up really just kind of bringing this overall shape up like so and making sure that these lines were straight and, and whatnot. And then you can see I'll go ahead and then extrude this like so. And so I extrude that and that's basically how I did the headlamp last time. And then I'll go ahead and just extrude this inwards. And then you can just kind of merge that to center like this. All right. And once I do that, you can go ahead, make sure I have no other faces selected and just kind of scale that down. And of course, use the circularized components like that. And that'll give you a nice clean circle. And there you go. Of course, there's a little bit more that I had to do just to get the right form and everything to match that with the imagery. But that's the key thing that I did. All right. And then I just kind of made sure that I had this nice separation here in the front hood. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and focus on how we can go ahead and just start paneling and really breaking this model up. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hide out all of these parts here and bring back the model essentially right before I did all the paneling work. All right. Now you want to make sure to have all of your edge flow nearly final. There's always going to be some adjustments that happen later, but at this point, we make sure that all of our body lines and everything are per exactly where we want them to be. All the detail is there. All the form is there so we can add more detail. All right. So once we do that, which I've been doing essentially throughout all of the videos, I now want to go ahead and adjust the edge flow for the door lines. And this is going to be a matter of taking our existing topology and in combination with cutting and multi-cut and creating those details. So you can see here, I'll show you how I do the door line, is I have this nice edge here right in between. I can go ahead and just start edge sliding, holding Control shift middle mouse, and then I can use that to get the 
majority of the form of this door line. All right, then I get something like this where, okay, I don't have enough topology here and it's kind of cutting at an angle. So I'll go ahead and grab my multi-cut tool, cut this down to the middle. And instead of going to this corner here, I'm just going to go straight down like so, since we're cutting at this corner vert here. And then I'm going to continue cutting all the way through. I'm going to cut across like this. And then I'll continue this up. Now, since we're not cutting at this corner, I'm going to go straight up like this at this edge here and right click to exit the tool. And you can see what we have. Now I can go ahead and bring this vertice and kind of cut that to that corner. And we're still landing with all quads here, which is nice if we can manage that. All right. And the next thing I want to do, this is where it gets tricky because we have this door line, this door panel essentially cutting through all of these edges here. So almost always, you know, we're going to end up with some triangles here for our for our panels. Now, the key thing I want you to understand is because of the way that we're going to bevel, triangles are OK, and I'll show you why. All right. So what I want to do now is go ahead and just kind of move these vertices into place, making these adjustments to right about there, matching our side reference. And I'll go ahead and cut and I'm going to just split this polygon here to this triangle and then I'm going to end up cutting to the middle here and I'm going to right click to exit tool and I'm going to keep cutting to right about here to get this nice arch here. All right. So I'll go ahead now and just kind of edge slide cut right there in the middle. And then we can, of course, just connect those edges like that and connect these edges and vertices like so. So we're left with this here. OK, where you can see we have this face here. So there's a couple different ways and I would just do whatever gives you the minimal amount of artifacting. So you could split this here and end up with a quad here and a triangle here. Or what you could do is kind of space out these edges and move this edge here a little bit further out like so. I actually missed that vert. So a little bit further out like this. And then I can go ahead and cut in this edge like so and then end up connecting here so now we have this nice edge that runs all the way around for our door line okay now we are left with this end gone here all right so we'll take a look at kind of different ways to deal with that all right so what i may end up doing is just taking this vertice here like this using my target weld tool let me deselect anything and I'll just kind of add it to or weld it to this vertice here and we'll see how that turns out. So we still have this triangle here, but that's OK. And here. So we'll see how that ends up turning out. Now, the key thing is you want to make sure that your body lines are the key lines that you don't disrupt. Right. That was the whole point. Right. So you can kind of see how I have these two body lines here. And this is the key lines that I need to make sure that stay intact. Right. I wouldn't want to disrupt any of these that we have here. All right. So with that now, I can go ahead and kind of check the top view and see what we have here. I'm going to turn off the grid so it's a little bit easier to see. So hopefully you can make a sense of what we have. And we have this door line here. And like I said, I'm using the reference image as a guide based on the reference that I was looking at in photography. This is going to be a little bit wider. All right. So I have this about here. And of course, you'd want to make sure just to scale everything. So this is a nice straight panel here so I can hold control shift and edge slide scale to kind of scale that. All right. I like that. And then what I can do is kind of bring this edge here. I'm going to actually move this up a bit because that's what it was in the reference. And I'm going to end up multi cutting across here and I'm going to add this nice panel that we have right on the hood. So I'm going to go ahead and just start multi cutting. And you see, I'm not going to go as wide as this. You can see because I'm starting from a little bit in inside. So I'm going to just cut this edge like so. And I'm going to just continue it like this. And I'll just edge slide this. And I'll go ahead and cut that across. So you can kind of see how I'm doing the paneling here. And then what I want to do is just scale this, make sure that's nice, perfectly straight all the way up. And I'm using edge slide while I do that. And there we go. And I can go ahead and cut this. Now, don't worry about, you know, adjusting edge flow and everything. I'm going to space this out later. 
So I'm just cutting in and adding in my panel detail. All right, so we've gone ahead and added this here on the hood. We've gone ahead, we have the edge flow that we have for the headlight. Now you can see I need to go ahead and just kind of finish out this edge here. So I'll go ahead and continue that using insert with edge flow down here. And I'll go ahead and just cut this across. So you can see I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup on all of our edge flow and topology. And then what I want to do here, the one thing that I want to do is actually remove this inset because this is going to cause issues, right? Because this extrusion should happen after I do the bevels. So I'm going to go here and I'll remove that. I'm just going to remove this edge like so. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, there we go. So I kind of cleaned that up now that we have that. All right, we can kind of move on to the back piece here or the rear window. So I'm going to kind of go over here and all I'm really going to do is just adjust this edge, move this a little bit further down because this is going to be part of the window primer in detail there and everything else I'm pretty much happy with. You know, I spent a little bit more time uh, when I'm doing this kind of on my own or as I'm preparing for the tutorials. So I'm just trying to make sure that you get the overall concept. So I'll go ahead and actually just edge slide this. So I'll hold control shift, scale that. And you know, you can use this to adjust and use the reference as needed. And there we go. So we have this edge here for our rear panel. And then we have the front panel or excuse me, the side panel, so we can kind of see what we have here. Now, what I want to do for this is actually, because we're preparing for this extrusion, this edge kind of runs at an angle here. So I'm going to actually delete this edge here so you can hopefully see that a little more, more clearly. So I'll select this, remove that, and I'm going to just cut starting from the top. And this is going to get ready for my window extrusions. So we're going to just kind of cut straight across like so. And I'm actually going to end up using this edge that we have here. And I'll cut down to about here. All right. And we can cut this right in the middle. And I'll go ahead and edge slide that. And we can finish that out by having this. Okay. So I'm not too worried about this because we're going to separate these out into panels. So we're going to do some cleanup anyways after the fact. And that's one of the key things that I want you to understand. Okay, so there we go. So we just spent this. So I'm going to go ahead and save just to be safe, this progress. So we've gone ahead and prepared all the edge flow for beveling. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start beveling and creating our panels. All right, so the last thing I'll do is these window extrusions. These were there just to help see it in more detail. I want to just remove these control backspace to remove that. And same thing with the side panel piece, because I'm going to do a new uh, extrusion on that. All right. So once we do that, we can go ahead and start beveling. All right. So let's go ahead and select all of our edges. So I'm going to select these kind of running down for the door line. Like so. So I'll go ahead and select all of that. And then I'll go ahead and select the rest of the edge flow that we have throughout the model. Now, the one thing I want you to keep in mind is you do want to continue these cuts past the line that you're going to be beveling. And then you clean up, clean that up after the fact. So I'll show you what I mean here in a little bit, but I'm going to just continue this cut here. So make sure to do that anywhere else that you have kind of these temporary cuts, okay? And that should about do it. I think I had one extra edge here, so I'll deselect that. But these are all the edges that should line up with all the door lines, gap lines, and everything throughout our vehicle. All right, now, if you want these all to be consistent, consistent width and gap, then you can do them all at once, or you can do them separately with different dimensions. For example, on a typical vehicle, that has really tight gaps, you're looking at about 0.18 centimeters in gap 
width, but for the larger gap, they're about 0.45 centimeters. All right, so with that in mind, I'll keep that in mind as we're going through and doing our beveling. All right, so now that I have that, what I will do is go ahead now and begin the bevel process. Okay, so I'll go ahead now, once I have this, and save, and then I'll bevel. So shift, right click, bevel. And there you go. Now, here's the thing. This beveling is going to be a multi-stage process because we want to do an initial bevel to help maintain the hard surface look. And then we're going to have another bevel for our extrusion, meaning I don't want to use fraction since fraction is relative basis. And I don't want to use that. I want to use precise dimensions and measurements and I see I actually had one edge here selected so I'm going to redo that real quick and bevel that and I'm going to just hit Q to exit the tool and go to my channel box editor and I'll just kind of bring that over here and now you can see we have offset as fraction I don't want that I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to put in a manual value now this is going to be large this is going to be about one centimeter here it's going to be pretty big Okay, so you can see what we have. And when you say, well, why are you doing that? You said 0.18 to 0.45. These bevels or this bevel is a bevel that we're using to hold and give us that hard surface panel. Okay, so that means I need to give this two segments. And there you go. So we've gone ahead and given that two segments. And so now a little bit of cleanup has to happen before we go on to the next part. Because you can see what happens once I enter that segment. Now there's obviously a couple different ways. You can, you know, leave it as is and then manually cut it. But I typically do this. And then what I end up doing is grabbing my multi-cut tool. And I'll go from this at vertice here to that vertice. And then I'll end up removing these. And then what I end up having is this nice, perfectly straight line that goes through all of our kind of uh, perpendicular T section here. So you have to make sure to clean this up before you move on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that throughout the model. That does it for cleaning up those bevels. Then you're going to have to make sure to go ahead and merge these vertices here, anywhere you have kind of these uh, triple vertices that it gets from having kind of the intersection in vertices or excuse me in edges so oops don't want to do all those together so i'll go ahead and merge those so now we have a nice continuous line and it's kind of back to where we want so this process depending on your edge flow does take a little bit of time and it does take a little bit of cleanup but it's no problem because it's definitely definitely worth it once you get to the next part all right, this should be the last one here. All right. So what we have here is this. Now, one thing I should have mentioned earlier is always, always, always make sure to duplicate your mesh before you go through and bevel, right? Because I have this whip folder and you can see that I have all of these different surfaces and whatnot. And I end up keeping the pre-beveled version in here so you can see this is right before i did the bevel okay so keep that in mind you always want to make sure to store your original model before the paneling happens just in case you want to go back and make some edits so moving along here's what we got we've kind of cleaned up all the edges we've gone through and added this initial holding line for our beveling now, I didn't do the windshield, and I'll show you why later, but here's everything that looks good. So I'll delete history and save, and then we'll continue to move on. So I'll go ahead now and select that middle edge that we've created from that previous bevel. It should be pretty easy to select all of these edges, like so. Remember, we don't want the one that runs across there. This one actually ends here or runs across like so. Okay. And we got that, that, and the door line that runs through uh, all over here. So we should clean this up here. 
All right, so we got that. And don't worry if there's really close edges, we're gonna clean that up uh, after all the beveling. All right, so I've gone ahead and selected all of the edges that we just did for the paneling. Then what we can do, missed one right here, like usual. And what we can do now is do the actual bevel that we're gonna use for extrusion. Meaning I'll go ahead now and bevel again. So shift right click and bevel edge. Okay, and we're gonna again turn off offset as fraction. And this time instead of using like, you can use like 0 0.2, 0 0.18, kind of like what I said earlier. All right, and I end up doing this next part just so it's easier to select. So I add two segments like so. So things are gonna get real tight in there, but no problem. And we don't have to double clean this up, so don't worry about that. We're just using this edge here to select, okay? So go ahead now and select all of those edges that you just newly created with that bevel, all right? All right, I went ahead and selected all my edges. Now I typically just like do a quick test where I'll move on the normal just to make sure that I can see pretty easily that I have all of them selected, which I do. So then what I wanna do is hit Q, hold Control, right click, assuming you still have your, vert your edges selected, Control, right click, two faces, and then do two faces. Now we have all of the faces selected. So we'll go ahead next and extrude. So I'll hold shift right click, extrude face. There you go. Now I can push this in like this. And I typically use a nice 0.5. It kind of depends on how deep that goes, but there we go. Now don't clear your selection yet because the next thing that I want to do is hold control or excuse me, shift right click and we want to extract faces. There we go. So select everything delete history. Now you've extracted the extrusion, which you shouldn't need, but you have there just in case you want to use that for, for anything. Sometimes for low poly models, I'll use these just for nice, simple blackouts and, and whatnot like that, right? But I'll go ahead and select this, isolate the vehicle, hit three on the preview, and there you go. Look at that, right? So now we have this nice extrusion, this nice bevel here throughout the entire model. And you can see how good that looks. It holds up really well. You have, look at this highlight guys. This is what I want you to, to watch, right? This highlight that's running across the vehicle, it's not being disrupted at all, right? And it carries over smoothly on the body lines and over the body gaps and everything. You can see here, it holds up really well as well. So I like this combination or this technique that we used here to add in this edge here. And then we have these triangles, which are fine. These, because we have these night tice bevels are working okay. And because it's going to subdivide as quad anyways, that gives us what we need. But look at that. Now, one final detail that I end up doing as needed is sometimes I'll go in here and in our gaps is just control middle mouse click right here on the middle. Oops, looks like I added an extra edge there. So I don't want to do that. So like I said, I'll multi cut kind of right here on the inside like so. And then I'll grab this edge and move this slightly on the normal. This is if I need to. So you get like that. So this will tighten your, your door lines. And then look at this, you have something like that. And if you wanted to tighten it even more, well, you can go ahead and add in an edge here that runs closer, All right? So this gives you that complete control depending on how close you get and how hard surface that you want this to look. I mean, that's butter smooth, guys. I was super excited to get to this point and really show you this technique because this is, these are techniques that I use for all sorts of modeling. For, especially for automotive. I've done a lot of marketing shots, commercials, billboards, and stuff like that. And they always want to make sure that the reflections always are consistent across these gaps. Anyways, I'll go ahead and undo that last part since that is kind of like the final, final detail that I typically do. And then now you can kind of see how everything's starting to look. It just looks fantastic. 
All right. Now, the other thing is, you know, we have the gap here for our for our windows and everything. And then there's this last stage for cleaning up. Right. So you can see here. All right. Well, we got these and what do we do? Right. Well, you're going to go here now and you're just going to kind of clean these up and remove the triangles as needed. Right. So I'll delete that. And there you go. Now, this is, again, why you want to make sure your form and everything is good before paneling. Right. The last thing that you want to do is start paneling when your form still needs work. Right. We get excited. We want to separate things out and go. But because we spend all that extra time and focused on the form proportions and everything, the paneling, honestly, is pretty quick and comes towards the end. So just make sure that the vehicle looks good because I was able to catch again the headlight and make sure that that looked really good. Right. Because now what I can do here is take this geometry like this and this is essentially just going to extrude back. And then I can just delete these edges that were extruded or these faces that were extruded back like so. And there you go. All right. And there's a little bit of cleanup that we have to do here. But all in all, that's what, how I extruded that. And then I think what I ended up doing now is just, again, cleaning this up. Actually, I can outright remove this edge. It's not needed. But it still looks continuous because it was all part of one form. All right. So that was the main technique here that I wanted to show you. And now when it comes to doing these uh, other pieces, like the door lines, the good thing is or here with the doors, these are cr different chrome bezels. So what I end up what you can end up doing is kind of taking this window. So I'll go ahead and save. Actually, it would have been better to iterate save so you can kind of keep this. I, I, You can see I'm on like 60 something right now. That's because I just keep, you know, saving, saving and uh, as I move forward. Right. I And a couple of times I'm like, no, I didn't like how I did this. And then I would go ahead and jump back a couple iterations or whatever if it's not in my whip folder. OK, so I have this here for the window. And what you can simply do is a combination of techniques is I can go ahead and extrude offset this by a little bit maybe 0.5 offset then hit g to repeat last push that in a little bit so i'll move this in like negative one and you want to like write these values down i have all these written down as i'm going so i know the main thickness that i have for my bezels here i know the uh, uh bezels when i say bezels not bevels these bezels here are chrome bezels right and then these are obviously our bevels here. And I can go ahead now and, you know, clean this stuff up. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this. These edges here. And you may need to add in another edge. You know, if sometimes that happens where things aren't perfect, perfect, no big deal. You would just go in and edge flow, add that in there. And that should help keep things pretty tight if needed. But, you know, that's the good thing about doing that with chrome pieces like this and not with, you know, the sheet metal here in the car paint. But anyways, we have this, like I said, and I can go ahead now and grab the window geometry. Like so, and we can extract faces. Delete history on everything. And select these. And I'll go ahead and hit G, repeat last, or that didn't work. Oh, because I deleted history. Delete history again. There you go. Right? Now, of course, we need to add in some holding lines here. And that's the nice thing about once you separate it from the windows. Let me actually remove uh, edge flow here. And the nice thing is you can just do that after the fact. And not have to worry about complicating because we want windows to be nice and smooth. They're nice, simple surfaces. So I can actually like add in some extra holding lines there as well. All right. So you get something like this. OK, I cleaned it up even more on my end, but I think you get the idea. Remember, we're just focusing on workflows that you can apply to your own models. So it's not like a step, step by step. But uh, there we go. 
Nice, simple, we broke that out. I'll probably need to add in some a little bit more uh, to clean that up. But I think you guys get it, right? So take a look at how, how good this looks. I still need to sm smooth this out here for the window. And for this piece here, what I ended up doing was using that technique where I'll make this live here for the window, the windshield, I, I mean. And what I want to do, actually, I need to just verify that it's this edge here. Yeah. So this is the edge that I'm going through and creating this, this bezel piece here. It's just this chrome piece that actually just sits on top. So I didn't. I don't need to worry about doing the the beveling technique. You can if you want. So I'll just go ahead and quickly quad draw over, and I'll show you what I mean. And there we go. I have that quad draw now. Before I you know do any extrusions, what I end up doing is selecting this edge here, and you can see I was pretty fast when plotting these points and doing another bevel, and then here. I'm just using the reference that I have here, looking on the right, and I'll end up, you know, making sure that I bevel this at a constant width, and that I like that, so I'll end up deleting the excess. The reason I do that, remember, is just to make sure that this is a constant bevel thickness all the way around. All right, then once I do that, I can simply go ahead now and extrude this up. And I think I end up using like maybe one, 1.5, and I'll end up putting some holding lines here that run along just to kind of better hold that form. And then there you go. So you get something like that. That was quick and dirty. And then now I can just select the window or the windshield, I should say, and extract that. There you go. And we have this on top. There we go. And now you can start to see how everything's beveling. And then the windshield or the rear window is very similar. I won't, I won't do that just for the sake of time. But that's how everything works. And that's how uh, I got to this point, this workflow here. So I'll go ahead and hide this. That's how I got to here. All right. So I hope this was helpful. As always, if you found this helpful, a like, a simple like will help. Really, that's all I ask as this channel continues to grow. And let me know down in the bottom what you'd like me to cover next, because the main thing I'm going to cover is starting to add in these modeling, these kits, these kit pieces here for uh, Sun Kang's uh, Datsun 2040Z and I'm going to model these wheels. So this is what I'm going to model next. I've covered modeling wheels and tires before. What I haven't covered is doing these sports versions where it's all continuous. So I'll cover that in the next tutorial and we'll go from there. So I really hope you found this helpful. I'm always really excited to show you guys these techniques. And please, at the bottom, at the comments, let me know down below. Let me know down below if you guys have any uh, comments, feedback, or, or anything you'd like me to cover, or anything on your own for, for your techniques. But anyways, I'm rambling. If you guys stuck around this long, I really, really thank you. As always, I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys around.